Hey everyone, I'm so excited because I'm finally going to take my Ember Overland RV on a serious, seriously long RV trip all the way down into Arizona and back up here to Canada. So uh, that's going to be really cool. And also, I'm going to go see the Off-Road Wrecker Olympics down in Hurricane, Utah. And so if you're a fan of Matt's Off-Road Recovery or Fab Rats or any of the other Southern Utah Off-Road Recovery YouTube channels, then you're definitely going to want to find out where I'm going and get yourself some tickets as well. So let's talk about it right now. Hey, I always like to remind you, you don't need to actually watch this intro video. You can just click to this time spot right here and move on to the rest of the video. Hey, don't forget to subscribe. I put up all this stuff for free. And the one thing I ask from you guys is you subscribe and help me get to a thousand subscribers. And then you can unsubscribe once I get over that number. So let me take you through my planning journey. This first trip I'm taking with the Ember RV. It's going to be me alone with my dog, Lizzie. We're going to hit the road together. I'm leaving my wife behind on this one, unfortunately. But she's going to come and join me in the middle of the trip. And I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this trip is my 50th birthday trip. Um, I'll be turning 50 uh, here coming up in the next month or two. I'm basically going on one of those midlife crisis RV journeys you see movies made about, right? I'll be targeting an area in rural central Arizona where my sister has property and my brother is going to come and visit as well from Iowa. So the three of us are getting together. Coincidentally, my sister's birthday is just a day before mine. We're years apart. but uh, So we're going to be celebrating both our birthdays there. My brothers and his family are coming in. And it's going to be a great family uh, get together while we're down there. Uh, but a big part of this trip is really taking it out on a long adventure, putting it through some trials and seeing what breaks. So I'll be going on this trip with my dog, Lizzie. Unfortunately, my wife left to stay behind because she has a production schedule and works in the animation business. Uh, and she's going to be keeping one of our dogs with her, Linus. Now, later on, she's going to come and visit me on this trip. And when she comes and visit me, we're just going to have a pet sitter come and hang out at the house for those few days and house sit for us while, while she, she's gone. So our dog isn't alone. Uh, we feel bad we're leaving him behind. But it's nice when I'm gone for a month or more for my wife to have a dog and for me to have a dog. And that way we don't get so so lonely. So Lizzie and I will be leaving from Vancouver and we'll be heading down at a fairly good pace, but I'm not really starting my planning there. My wife's going to be joining us down there when my family's flying in. So my wife's actually going to fly in from Canada. So really what I'm doing is planning around that before and after, right? Those dates are fixed and whatever I choose to do, and I like to plan as little as I can uh, so that I can be as free as I can on these trips. But there's one thing that has to happen, and that is that I get to uh, this part of Arizona on a set amount of days in the middle of this trip. So first, I just plotted that into my spreadsheet and figured out, okay, that's where I'm just going to start my planning. Then I decided to work my way backwards up to Vancouver. So now, how much time would I need to have a comfortable journey down there and enjoying some stops along the way? As I build back from this central Arizona destination for five days, I start going in reverse. I say, well, if I'm going to go here uh, and be here, then where am I going to be in the days before that? And... If there's one thing that you've learned from knowing me or even watching some of my videos, I've got a thing for Monument Valley. I loved Monument Valley when I went there so much that I got a tattoo on my arm of my RV visiting Monument Valley. Kind of a freak that way. But I did want to get back to Monument Valley. So I started looking into Monument Valley, started looking at staying uh, at Goldings or, or there at, at the uh, Monument Valley Overlook. And of course, they don't allow dogs at the Overlook uh, campsite. So uh, I could have stayed at Goldings. And then I, I was looking around, I started thinking and looking at the Valley of the Gods. Now, this is just north of Monument Valley, and Valley of the Gods is kind of like considered a smaller version of it. It's on BLM land versus the Navajo Nation, which is where um, Monument Valley is. So there's a lot more uh, relaxed rules there. I can camp wherever I want. I can fly my drone there and get some great shots. Uh, I can camp there for a couple of days, leave my RV parked there, and then go and check out other areas. Not only will I be able to camp wherever I want, but winding through Valley of Gods is a 17-mile, somewhat rough, but 
pretty mellow dirt road. There are some gullies you go through where you go through like river channels. So if there's any rain whatsoever, then I'm not going very far down this road at all. But if it's, you know, not too wet, I should be able to take this on a decent first trek. And this will be the first time that I take uh, the, the ember on miles of dirt and rocky and, and rough road. Uh, and one of the reasons I want to go out down to the southwest on this trip is to take the ember on some rough roads. Let's go see how it's going to do. If I'm going to go all the way up to uh, to the northern Arctic Ocean in, in Canada, I better be able to handle some basic dirt roads in BLM land. So staying in the Bureau Land Management Zone there at the Valley of the Gods, that'll allow me to go day trip over to Monument Valley so I can go check it out and go drive through the valley and get some beautiful pictures with Lizzie and I. Or we can go up to the uh, Mogi Dugway, which is an interesting kind of dugout road that goes up to one of the plateaus. So you can see uh, the whole area. You can see Monument Valley. You can see Valley of the Gods. And you can see Gooseneck State Park, which is its own place to go visit. There's a chance I might camp there as well, but I hear it's pretty windy when you stay near the cliff. So I might just go out there for the photo op and check it out. It is just a awesome view um i don't know if it's worth spending the whole day there uh we'll find out though and that's the cool thing about this trip i don't have any reservations for that whole section i'll simply be boondocking it i've got my generator i've got my solar panels i've got everything i need so i'll just be going wherever it seems cool uh now once I look at that on the map and I said, okay, I'm definitely going to spend a couple of days here before I get to my location. So now I need those few days on the schedule. Let's go back further. Well, I'm driving down to this point. Might as well go to Moab. I've been to Moab once before. I didn't have a four wheel drive truck when I was there. So now that Lizzie and I will be passing through, I said, well, let's stay for a couple of days in, in uh, Moab. I'm not going to do any rock crawling or anything, but there's some cool roads you can go out on there and just soft road, as I like to call it, instead of off roading and go have some fun, not go anywhere too dangerous. Uh, that, that'll be awesome to, to check out Moab. Um, and then from there up, it was really like, well, let's just go straight from Vancouver to here, meaning. I'm going to head out from Vancouver and get to Utah and not really going to stop too much. I always start just across the border in Bellingham where I'll load up with food on the American side. I'll park the RV at an RV spot so I can go ahead and flush the tanks, uh, flush the, and sanitize the fresh tanks at the beginning of the trip and just get it all prepped and ready for this long week of, of boondocking. And then I'm just going to head out and I'm just going to drive in a straight line. Now, as far as planning along the way, well, really, all I've done so far is look at the rest areas between, uh, you know, there in, in Bellingham and down there in, in Utah. Um, I, I don't mind staying at truck stops. I don't mind staying at rest areas. I don't mind staying at Walmarts when it's OK. Um, you know, once I'm inside my RV, it's my apartment. I really don't care what's outside. I don't care about the idling sound of a generator or a or a uh, truck I sleep hard and, and so uh, I, I'm comfortable with that and that makes it really convenient for me I can just leave Vancouver and head all the way down to southern Utah and not make one plan as to where I'm going to stay and I'm confident I will have no problems with that I will stay at casinos possibly along the way if I see them I'll stay at rest areas like I said uh, truck stops I'll just stay in that dirt lot that's next to uh, where I see a bunch of other trucks parked um, that's the the beauty of this lifestyle so now we've talked about this whole idea of me driving from Vancouver down to Utah. But hey, it's March. And when you drive through all these mountain passes and through potentially snowy areas in March, you've got to be prepared for snow. So that means carrying chains, even though I pretty much won't drive if I have to put chains on. But for legal reasons in some states, to drive through those passes, you've got to have chains. So I'll likely have to pick up some chains here before I leave. And really, I'm not going to drive through crazy snow. So... What I then have to do is start doing a plan A and a plan B and a plan C. What I've described is plan A. Plan A is basically doing a diagonal line from the corner of the United States down into Utah. But plan B says, well, maybe there's going to be some snow I need to avoid. Maybe I'm not crossing over there in Washington and going over the Snoqualmie Pass. Maybe I'm going to be avoiding some of eastern Oregon while there's some snow or inclement weather. So there's an alternate path, a plan B. 
Plan B does have me cutting over a bit there in Seattle, um, but eventually what I do is I go through the center and, and cut through Nevada. So the idea is I move a little west. It's, it's one step west. Uh, it's a little less direct route, but it still gets me there. And, it, and I love the desert nonetheless, so I don't mind driving through the center of, of Nevada. You know, it takes me through Vegas. Never hurts to spend a few hours in Vegas. Um, so uh, we'll see how that plan B works out. But I do need a plan on that, right? What if there's some major storms along the way? Uh, maybe those storms are up north, but not up south. So I'll have to uh, cut down, you know, the Highway 5 and then cut across at some point. Or maybe those storms are only down south. Uh, so I decide to you know, stick with this plan B because, you know, I can avoid most of the stormy areas until I get out into Arizona. I think that will cut through Flagstaff and I've definitely driven through Flagstaff when there's snowy problems. So it can happen. Plan C just basically says, hey, why don't we just uh, drive down the coast? Uh, I'll just drive down the Oregon coast as an alternative. Whether you're driving up or down the Oregon coast, you are going to be pulling out a lot, going to the pullouts, pulling off and checking out the beaches and all of that. And every one of those is going to be on the west side of the road, right? This road follows the coast. So if you drive up the coast north, like I've done before, every time you want to pull over and check out the side of the road or check out a beach or check out a viewpoint, you're going to have to cross traffic, hang a U-turn, do something like that. When you're traveling with a trailer, that's a big ask. But when you're driving south, it's just as simple as pulling over and then pulling back out and pulling over and pulling back out. And it, over the whole course of, of driving down Oregon, it makes a big difference. Uh, the 20th, 30th, 50th time you want to stop on the side of the road and check out some, some attraction or some beach. Everything's on the west side of the road. So, uh, yeah, always drive south. And so if I have to go and avoid all of that weather, if there's inclement weather just hitting all of the west you know from from washington down to, to utah these storms do come in sometimes then i'll just be hitting up the ocean and the oregon coast is generally a respite from all but the most extreme storms i've driven up and down the oregon coast in extreme hot and extreme cold uh, just to avoid uh, all of the problems that come with extreme temperatures uh, you got to drive and wind around a little more but if anybody's driven the oregon and washington coast and california coast it is just gorgeous now you've seen how I'm planning here, just using Google Maps, using an Excel spreadsheet. I've been using spreadsheets since before there was Excel. So uh, it's how I think, it's how I work. Um, it's what I do day to day. But when I was looking at this last trip, I was realizing that in the last few years, there's been some pretty cool cutting edge apps and some pretty good websites that handle a lot of the logic here. So I'm asking you now, what do you use to make these kinds of trips? Uh, do you actually use a website? Do you use an app on your phone? Uh, are you subscribed to something that helps you? Uh, there's a lot of options out there. and I'd like to hear from you. What do you recommend or what do you like to use when you do trip planning to sort of get all your numbers straight and get all your, your, your stops and destinations in order? Please comment below with what you think and I will definitely reply to your comment. If you're still with me on this long explanation of my trip, you've, I've talked about how I started with my destination there in, in Arizona and worked my way back. But now I have the return trip to figure out. Now, here's a cool thing about my particular job and my particular situation. Uh, I'll be taking vacation days from the time I leave Vancouver until you know I hang out with my family. It's all vacation time. But then I'll start working. Now, I can work from my laptop anywhere I'm at. I have to do meetings and such. I need to stay somewhere where I have at least cell phone coverage. Uh, if I'm staying in an RV park that has real Wi-Fi that actually works, that's a bonus. But generally, I just rely on either my company phone or my personal phone and just connect to the local cellular networks and, and work just fine. Uh, this means that my return home is not so much a schedule as much as it is just a route and how many days it takes is entirely my choice. Now I do need to swing back through the San Francisco Bay area. That's mainly to deal with some uh, family business dealing with my late brother and some of his possessions. I still need to deal with. So I'll be stopping by the Bay area and that I know, um, I know I'm going back to Vancouver 
and I know that I'll be working uh, on the weekdays, you know, at least for the good middle of the workdays, and I can watch email from the road those last couple of hours of the day. Um, but I don't exactly know when I'm getting home. And that comes at a real advantage. That that means, again, I don't have to plan and make reservations too much. Uh, I've got a friend's property in the Bay Area that I'll be staying at. It's actual RV pad that he built years ago. So it's got sewer and water and all that. Uh, I'll be staying at another friend's house up in the Northwest on my way home. Uh, I'll be staying at various um, you know rest areas and all that and boondocking as much as I can. Certainly, I will be stopping at RV parks. Uh, even though I'm boondocking many days here, eventually it's nice to just stop in an RV park, flush out all your tanks, disconnect for a day or two, go run errands, or just sort of spend two days at one park. Uh, it's a great way to decompress. I recommend, you know, some people do it like they have patterns, like every three days of boondocking, they want to do two days at, at an RV park. I don't quite have a pattern, but I will say that when I do stop at an RV park, it's really nice when I can do it for two nights. That way I can unhook and not just sort of pull in and pull out, pull in and pull out. So I will be stopping along the way at various times I may not be hitting up the Oregon coast on my way back. You know how I feel about driving north on the Oregon coast. Uh, and there's a slight chance that I might detour from Seattle out towards Idaho to some wonderful people I know out there who I wouldn't mind hanging out with a little bit on my way home. And then I would probably jut back home through Canada, uh, through the southern route, through a place called Castle Gar and Soyuz and other places there in British Columbia. Or I would cut across... Um, you know, Idaho and, and, and Eastern Washington. Uh, I think I'd prefer at that point to get it back across the border, but a great deal will be determined by the weather. I certainly won't, don't want to drive through the crow's nest highway in, in Canada when there's inclement weather. Um, I have gone and done it in April without any problems, but again, this is March. Uh, hopefully it's getting to the end of March by the time I'm in that area. So sure, that's the whole trip I've talked about, you know, going all the way through, whether I go back through Idaho, whether I go back through Seattle, avoiding the snow. But there's one thing I haven't mentioned yet, and that is the off-road Wrecker Olympics. Once I set up this whole trip and I set up A, B, and C, I realized that the Off-Road Wrecker Olympics, which is started by Matt from Matt's Off-Road Recovery YouTube channel, uh, is happening in Hurricane Utah at Sand Hollow. And so I did some soul searching and I said, you know what? I'm going to give up Moab and go there. I can still go off-roading in some really cool places. Sand Hollow is known for having lots of, of different trails. Uh, there's the rock climbing and sand trails. I will not be touching those, but they've got some really cool soft road and off-roading, you know, four by four friendly roads out there to go check out. I can go check out my maybe Ember on some dirt roads and see how she does there. And Lizzie and I are going to really enjoy checking out the crowd down there, checking out the whole off-road community. Uh, it, it's going to be a real treat for me so uh, if you are going to be down there between the 9th and the 11th and you're a fan well get yourself some tickets reach out to me i will be down there you can always email me at rvingwithjoe at gmail.com you can comment below and i will respond or just find me out there and tap on the shoulder but i expect there's got to be some viewers going to this thing and it's going to be a real blast so uh, if you're coming down there let me know and that's my new plan A. So I still have all those alternatives to get down there, uh, depending on how the weather is. But one way or another, I'm going to be in Hurricane Utah between the 9th and 11th. Then I'll have some days off to go check out the uh, Valley of the Gods and all that on my own time. But uh, gosh, I hope uh, you enjoy the videos coming up because I got a whole lot of videos coming out on this trip. So that's going to be my big trip. It's going to be 6,000 kilometers. I'm going to be making videos the whole way. Uh, also, I'm going to start putting links to my Facebook and Instagram. I'm just starting those up now, but they're more likely going to be where I'm going to be posting content real time while I'm traveling. So make sure you follow my Facebook and my Instagram, which I'll put in the description below. That's it. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 1,000, and you can really help me get these videos out there more if you click the subscribe button. See everyone.